All right, there we go. Welcome to the Hip Hop Hustle podcast. We're back for another week. Super excited about my next guest. The one, the only subculture is here. Uh, producer, songwriter, artist. Man, it's an absolute pleasure. And you just came out with a single called Dopamine. So for anyone who hasn't checked it out, check it out. And you finished 2023 with an EP as well, More of Rain. So, uh, yeah, man, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Um, I like your music cause it's, it's not the same as everybody else. Like it's different. I feel like every song that I listen to of yours is different. I feel like it comes with like almost like eclectic energy in a weird way. Like I, I never know, but it always seems to surprise me and it's like very calming and soothing. So hence why I wanted to have the man behind the music on the show. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the kind introduction. Glad you're liking the music. Yeah, pleasure to be here, man. Thank you. Awesome. Well, like when you make your music, because I think a lot of people would listen to it and maybe go through what I go through, which is like, I have no idea how he chooses the the inspiration and chooses where to get the music from and how to build it. Like, what's that process like for you? Um, I think like in terms of my vocabulary for music, which is just informed by my taste, it's it's just all over the place. And like, it has been since I was a kid, like the music I grew up on, the music I listen to now, like if you look at my, you can't see my record collection is here, but it's like, um, it's super eclectic. Um, I don't really sample a lot either. So like, like what you hear, like is, I mean, other than like w when I started producing, I used to sign for more, but, uh, it's all like, it's all live instrumentation in terms of piecing things together. But normally it starts with like, a, um, oh, like, I wonder what it would sound like if I combined this with this, something like two like disparate things, maybe disparate, like in time, something from the sixties, something from 2024, like what would billy holiday sound like if kanye west produced her you know or like what would like bowie sound like in 20 well what would old school like bowie iggy collab sound like in 2024 or, or like yeah like always like combining genres and um yeah i kind of nerd out on that on that um am i allowed to swear by the way actually yeah we should ask. yeah yeah um yeah like like um I kind of geek out on that, and then and then and then I can get a bit obsessive, like like uh, I I want I want to I want to accomplish something sonically, and I kind of put a lot of focus into it for a long time, um, and then when I'm done with it, I'm kind of done with it, and I don't ever want to do it again, <laughs> or like um, yeah I don't know I just it just um, I think it's the same with any creative like you 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 just have to follow your um, your instinct and like your desire, what you want to do. Um, if you compromise on anything, then it just doesn't feel whole, you know? That's so interesting though, because lots of artists, they find the recipe for a sound and they want to do it again and again and again and again. And for you to be like, once I did it, I'm kind of not wanting to do that again why like why do you think that for you you're like oh i accomplished that no thanks i don't want to accomplish that again i want to move on and challenge myself and find something new and interesting you know like i should probably explain as well that like there there is like two sides to what i do in terms of producing one is just producing a lot of different artists for their for their projects and then there's my own project so I'm like, you know, I was in today with Bina and yesterday I was in someone that was like a bit more poppy and then I'll have a, maybe a drill artist or I'll have a rapper or someone doing more boom back or more trappy stuff or like a folk artist or an indie artist or someone want to do punk rock or so I'm always jumping around doing all that stuff. But for me, my my artist project, my my subculture project is um is, is kind of just like the vessel for me to to nerd out on this stuff and to to be more ambitious um i'm not really interested in like putting out something that like i feel is like too um too derivative or too similar to something else that i put out otherwise it's just it's kind of like my art project you know um 
So like in my sessions, producing for other people, you know, obviously it's different. It's their, it's their project. So I'm trying to serve them while still like maintaining my approach, which is definitely like, I don't like study the charts. Like I'm not that kind of producer. Um, I always want to put things on their head a little bit, but also like just the way the game works, you know, like you have to, you have to stick to the brief, like somewhat. So, so my subculture project, my artist project is just, is, um, yeah, for me to be more ambitious with basically. Yeah. It sounds like your freedom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And sometimes it's like, I'll be working with someone that I love and I have this idea to get them on something, a certain style, a certain sound. And I know it's a bit of a reach and like, I have to convince them, you know, and then it ends up being my, like all of my most popular songs um what were those situations when i had to convince them and uh and then in the end like a lot of artists seem to want to work with me because of that music um so yeah I, I really value my my own project it's like it's been the thing for me to like really express myself why do you think artists need to be convinced to almost reach for the next thing or push themselves sonically I guess like in the, in the situation that I'm describing, it's because it's because they have their thing, right? Like they, they, they have their sound and, or they, they that, like their ambition musically, they know what they're trying to do. So when I'm like, oh, but I feel like you'll sound really cool on this. It's like, maybe creatively I'm correct, but at the same time, it's not my place to tell them you know, that they should be doing something different for their project because ultimately that's that's their baby and that's their prerogative to kind of make that call. So, but when it's on my project, I feel like people, you know, can be, you know, like they, they can um, take those risks, you know, with me. Yeah. Well, it's it's weird because I feel like by hiring you and having you as the producer, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get someone who's pushing the boundaries. You're going to get someone who's like his own artistry is trying to push. So when you come to a studio, like for me personally, I'd get you in and I'd want you to be like, oh, I think you'd sound good on this weird and inter interesting sound that you would have never thought about before. That would be a huge benefit as an artist to me because I think... I mean, the best artists constantly push themselves. They're always the ones who are like inventing new sounds, inventing their own new sound, and then figuring out how it works with their voice, with their look, with everything. Yeah. Sorry, I think maybe I misunderstood the question. What was uh, the question? <laughs> I think it was just what happens and what I've realized on the show is sometimes I just end up talking and then I'm like, okay, I'm done. Your turn to do the heavy lifting now. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it's, um, I guess, I guess, like, you know, like, I, I work with a lot of different people and, and, you know, in, in, like, in all honesty, you know, sometimes the trust is, is really there and, like, the best, most of the time, the best outcomes for me creatively, if I'm collaborating with, like, an artist and I'm, and I'm producing, it's, um, most of the time, the best outcome is when there's just an immense tr trust and I feel it, you know, and they're just giving me freedom. And most of the time, if they're kind of breathing down my neck and like, kind of um, like it feels a bit micromanagey, um, maybe like sometimes the, um, you know, the end result isn't, isn't as strong as it is when the trust is really there, you know, but you need to kind of... Um, like garner that trust like it, it doesn't just it doesn't just happen you know so <laughs> sometimes it takes time and um and um you know and sometimes it's just there you know someone's just like a fan of mine i'm a fan of theirs and and it's just like you know let's go um but it's also like you know when there's when there's intention it's also i don't know because it's it i'm not yeah i I, I kind of agree with what I'm saying. And I'm also like, I hope it doesn't sound like, you know, I don't want to be out of my comfort zone because also sometimes an artist will ask me to do something and I'm like, wow, okay, I haven't done that before. Or this approach is a bit different to like 
what I normally go for. And, and, and the result can be like something magnificent, you know? So yeah, I guess it's just different every time. Um, yeah. Yeah. How do you build that trust? Cause what you touch on to me is really interesting that fundamentally what you have is a relationship. Like when you're working with somebody, it's the base of your collaboration is the strength of your relationship. Do you trust each other enough? Do you respect each other enough? Do you believe genuinely and honestly that the other person is trying to put in their best effort into making sure that this collaboration goes well? So how do you build that trust, especially if you're working with somebody new? It's never like super, uh, you know, intentional. Like I don't want it to sound like it's it's not um it's not a manipulative process in any way. I mean, it's really like two people sitting in a room and just having conversations and just and just just talking about life and talking about what's going on in their life or what's going on in mine and talking about music and their music and my music and just like. Yeah, I've got like, I mean, I'm working on a lot of things right now, but there's like a couple projects which I'm working on the own, which I, I like, I'm really, really focused in on. And um, yeah, and like, it gets really, it gets really personal in here, you know? And um, like, not just artists sharing, me me sharing with artists, like last year and the uh, last year, basically, I've been in grief and, and like music has been like m my savior and um like, and it's been like, it's, it, and the grief has definitely like informed um, a lot of my creative decisions. And it's just there, like it's all, it's all there and open. I mean, like most of the time I'm working with artists, like there's, they're just, there's just an honesty that's here. That's like, um, you know, so I, I think there's trust on that level, trusting each other as human beings. Uh, and then there's also kind of creatively. And that just, I guess comes from like, you know, if they, they fuck with the music that I've made, that I put out, um, or they can see my approach and they can see how, I'm, how I work, you know, um, if, 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 if they're not into it, then I guess the trust creatively, like, wouldn't be there at all. And they'd be trying to get me to do something else, you know, and then I, and that, that's a kind of situation where, like, um, the trust isn't there, you know, and, and, and you can feel that. But luckily, like more, more as time has gone on, like more and more so, um, I feel like the trust is just there more and more, and artists seem to like you know really want to work with me and and want me to just do my thing. Isn't that weird that uh, like as you build your body of work, as people start to see what you're going to do, what you're trying to do, what you've managed to already do, then people come in in a different mindset, like they or they come in more open because you've got like a significant body of work. Whereas I've always felt, I mean, for me personally at the beginning, it's like significantly harder to garner any trust or credibility at the beginning. Like I used to get a lot more like blockers. I could feel the conversation wasn't as open as it seems to be. And as easy it is now to literally dive into any topic and just get a genuine response. Now, what you mean? Like when you started doing the podcast, you yeah. get like, wouldn't feel the trust was there in the same way that like it is now yeah that's interesting it's like i i well i think at first it was it's a weird i think when i started people were taking a risk like i didn't have a body of work so anybody yeah. who said yes was like well the average podcast likes lasts like 10 episodes is like the average they all quit before that and then I don't make my own music. I'm in Australia. Like it's over zoom. All these things are, are naturally uncomfortable. And then I just don't have that many conversations. So I used to find it would take like 20 minutes or so before there is a bit of like the breakdown of like, okay, this is a safe space. Some, right. some people never felt like I could feel there was a barrier that had came in single minded on what they wanted to discuss. And I found it very difficult to navigate. Whereas now I feel like I'm better at what I do, but also I've got a body of work so people can kind of listen and be like, oh, he's interviewed these people. It must not be all that bad. So like, right. it's fine. I think, I think yeah. it's just, it just happens over time where I'm more comfortable. They're more comfortable. 
and then yeah. it just clicks a little bit faster. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like your like approach to interviewing people has changed like since you since you started doing the podcast? I think I've gotten better at listening and paying attention. I think that's the hard part. People often ask, like, how do you come up with questions? And it's not actually asking questions that's difficult. It's actually listening to what you say to me for an hour, an hour and 20 minutes. That's the challenging part because it is tiring to, like, be very present and very focused. We don't do it very often in life where you're with someone and you won't look at your phone. And that's a distraction and that's a separation. So learning how to do that well is was the hard part i mean it is it is that you say that but it is also like such a good quality to have and it's such an important thing to sit and have real conversations and it's why i listen to to podcasts myself like very i listen to like the like some of the main podcasts i listen to which is very conversational and it is just great to just it feels like it's almost like um um just so different to like most of the kind of culture that we consume, you know, on our phones is just kind of the opposite to just two people having an honest conversation and listening to each other and just being present in the room, just being a fly on the wall for it. Well, I think it's because the pacing is different. What we see is fast. Like everything is fast. Everything is like now, 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 immediate gratification, like quick. Whereas when you listen to a podcast, you get to see the journey of the conversation and you're like, oh, this, this is slower, but I get to be on the ride and I get to see how they got to where they got. Like there's something enjoyable about just a slow paced conversation. I've always found that in movies that when there's long scenes of dialogue that are well thought out and well written, that they're almost the most satisfying thing you can get in a movie because you're like, oh, I actually get who I'm watching now. I understand the characters. I understand the journey. And like this fight is a real fight or this conversation feels genuine and very real. Like it could be happening in real life. Yeah. Yeah. Very rare. Can you like really get to know someone, you know, like listening to a really honest one hour conversation. Yeah. Do you do many interviews? No, 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 no. Not a lot. Why is that? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess like, um, I mean, it's not like I get invited on like many, many, many interviews. Um, if it's, if it's like, uh, if it's a platform that, you know, that I rate, that I really like, I respect, you know, I would do it, but uh, like, and I, even though I am technically an artist, I am a producer, you know, like, like. First and foremost, I guess. So that tends to mean like I'm more behind the scenes. You know, all the, all the, I always like, I'm always making jokes to all the, all the eyes because they're always like coming with like all these great clothes that they just got gifted from brands. And I'm just like, I don't get shit. No one sends me anything. <laughs> but that's just the reality, I guess, of being a producer is like you can be like just a bit more behind the scenes. But you, but that is still an artist. Like, you yeah. Know, you're, you're just not like, people can't make music without producers like absolutely yeah i just mean in terms of like um i'm not uh i don't you know i don't i don't have a live show um i'm not like up in my videos like i'm not like singing i'm not like in the same way that an artist would be with their front and center you know center stage um yeah what i do maybe is more like curatorial i guess would you consider doing a live show like putting together a live show? Yeah, like I would love to do a live show. But just because like musically, like my project is so varied. Um, and then also the voices on my project, like, you know, artists like Hack Baker and then Rachel Chinareri and Goya Gambani. And these are like very unique voices. <laughs> that I don't think I could just have like one or two vocalists performing other people, you know, I would need them. I would need them there, you know, and musically as well. Like I would need to have like what I want, what I, what I, what I, what I envision for the live show, uh, I wouldn't want to do on a small scale. So I guess I've just been waiting until like the demand is there for like a, a bigger level show that would allow me to put the right investment into it. 
you know? And until then, in all honesty, like this is where my heart is in the studio creating, like, like that is my favorite thing to do. I don't really want to be like on the road, like doing, doing, doing small shows and working my way up. Like I, I don't live to perform. I kind of live to create. That's a really good quote. <laughs> I don't live to perform. I live to create. Well, but that, but that is like, that is at the core of it. Like, of like an artist, like different artists, personalities is like, like what, like what are they, what are they in it for? Right. And I'm like, I see it with, with, you know, it's different. It's different for everyone. Some really are in it to perform. Um, whether that be to move people or it be to just be kind of center of attention or to impress people. And, and some are more in it to innovate and to push things forward and to, to, to express themselves in new ways and different ways. And every, every artist, I guess, is different. But I think generally, like a lot of artists do like, not that they only live to perform and not live to create, but they do like have that, that kind of lust for like performing, um, where I do enjoy performing, but I don't, I, I definitely don't live for it. I, I'd much rather be like in the back of the room, like in all honesty. Yeah. Well, there's something missing in the people who want to perform and who want to have attention. Like I recognize that in myself, like, says a guy who speaks to people every week and puts it on the internet. There's something that like, we're all trying to find within ourselves in doing something like this beyond simply like, just it's fun and enjoyable, but having met it being fun and enjoyable is a part of it. And it's the best part that I get to say, I genuinely like doing this. Um, but there's also a part of it that's like, oh, there's something I'm trying to satisfy within myself. I don't know what it is. I always liked performing as a kid, like drama and high school and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. this is like the, the a continuation of that. Like I like public speaking, which is often, you do. Uh, yeah, I do. Um, wow. okay. cool. I always get nervous before I public, I hate singing in public, but I always get yeah. nervous before I speak. But then once I'm on a roll and I can feel the crowd moving and hearing me, then I feel very calm and very confident. I feel like I'm meant to be there. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I definitely don't have that, that quality. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. I wonder like if you, if you're having a conversation with a friend, um, don't know how to frame this question. Like, do you think any of you, any of your qualities as an interviewer comes out like conversationally in a more like relaxed context, like talking with a friend, or is this like is your like interviewer kind of persona? Is it is it is it, is it different to what you would be like if you were with a friend? No, I don't think so. I think now more than ever they're very similar. Yeah, actually, I think it comes out the most when I'm speaking with somebody new, um, or or when I feel like what we're about to discuss is important. And so mm -hmm. then I will switch into very present into like, just, I can just sit in the conversation in of itself without feeling it necessary to jump or deviate. Like I can probably talk about one topic for a long period of time and keep diving deeper and ask more questions. And so I find that comes out when I feel like there's something in a conversation, um, but I try not to treat my friends like I'm interviewing them <laughs> for, for the yeah. podcast. Um, but uh, lots of people have said that it feels like I never run out of things to say or things to ask. And that I think when I speak, I'm not in a rush anymore. I think we have a habit of being in a rush and I'm okay now with finding my words as opposed to just yeah, I don't know. I think people who speak very quickly do themselves a disservice because your yeah. words are important. And by speaking quickly, you send the message that you're not in control, that you don't really believe what you say. And so why should I? And I think I, there's an important like, pacing to that. And similarly, like in the reverse of that, like people that speak really slow. I, I, I an old friend of mine's dad, like I remember he used to speak so slowly, um, that everything he said, like, 
just held like so much significance. Actually, my friend is the same. He's the same, like he speaks really slowly, but, um, or he waits a while and he really like composes his thoughts. And, and then when he, what he says is, is, is normally like a bit more gathered, you know, than like, I, I can be a bit more scatterbrained sometimes. Well, also being scatterbrained is fun. So, but yeah, I think yeah. it's just the control of being able to blend in between. Like my formal career was, is in sales. So you, I yeah. learned how to control my voice selling to people. I used to yeah. learn how to be like, all right, now I can speak really fast and I can just get the information out or I can slow it down and I can just like pace it differently. And you get taught those things in that career. So that has helped inform this but i've i think just a slower pace is more calming it, yeah it just fear everyone's like Ugh. Yeah. and so then when i see the people on the internet debating and they're like rushing i'm like you're just you sound like you're you're ruining it all like you're ruining your point of view because everything that you say is getting lost in the wash and if it matters you should stop speaking like make your point and stop and it mm. lands and silence is extremely valuable. In like in this in this medium, you mean, or just in, in any medium. Uh, like when you speak, I think people make their point and they keep talking. But I think yeah. if you made your point, stop speaking yeah. and let your point land and let it resonate. And the silence gives space for the point to land gives the other person time to think and then also shows that I meant that to be the very singular thing that I was trying to express. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. And then you're like, I have to fill the, the space now. The other person genuinely really is like, oh, that's my turn, my turn to speak. So I, maybe I don't know what I'm going to say, but yeah, they yeah. tend to feel it because otherwise it's awkward. It's true. It's true. I want to see how something we can silence for. Yeah. <laughs> what a wonderful podcast if we just both sat in silence for, for a few minutes. <laughs> just to prove it funny. <laughs> yeah. I might just edit the silence in. We don't have to do the uncomfortable of like, we have to do it and see who breaks first. Yeah. That's funny. Do you find people like are genuinely interested in your music outside of your industry, like in terms of just people in your life or people you run into, do you find that they hear you're an artist and then have like a thousand questions as about to how it works? Sometimes, um, I guess a bit, I mean, you know, like if I'm, if I'm, I mean, if I'm completely honest, I don't go out that much. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm doing like five sessions a week at the moment with like a different artist every day. Five sessions a week for me means I'm working evenings, I'm working weekends. Normally I have like maybe one DJ set every weekend. So I'm just like, go, go, go right now. Um, and it's just full on. Um, so I'm not in like a ton of like new social situations. Um, I think also like, like I live in London. And London is a, like, I'd say it's like a, a corporate city. Like, really, it's not like other some other places. Um, and being an artist in London, and like I speak about this with a lot of other artists, that like you, you can feel like you're kind of, you're moving around a different energy, which I I, I love. Like, when I go to LA, like, it's, it's completely different. And that's cool too. But um, it feels more like real life here. Like, there's real life happening here. And like what I do, I guess it's real life, but it's also not really like, you know, just trying to, trying to land something cosmic every day and, 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 you know, try to, try to channel something like deeper than words every day. Um, and then when you leave the house, like, you know, it's, it's, it's real, it's real out there. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, um, yeah, but like, I mean. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I've answered your question. Um, no, you you answered you answered the question. Like, yeah, I uh, so yeah, I think you answered it in the way of like you just said what came to your head and that. 
is fine. Yeah. Like yeah. You, I, I don't need any more than that. But it, what what it made was like, so do you find going out and like seeing the real world, as you put it, is grounding for you? Like it helps you like also get out of your head a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Especially right now, because it's just crazy. Like I'm just going so hard right now. There's someone actually, an artist yesterday, two days ago, yesterday, asked me like, what's your inspiration? And no one like, no one's asked me that. Like, it's kind of a, a bit of a, like a bait question, um, like a basic question. Um, but I couldn't answer it. It took me ages. And I realized like, yeah, it is just like life. It's so corny, but, um, but, um, <laughs> but it, but it is, it is like watch a movie that really moves your see something on the street or um you know just going about life like i don't know i i think like i mean obviously I, yeah i can hear some music and something could inspire me like that but nothing really like life or you know having a conversation it's the same with like i'd rather i'd rather talk about creativity with a um with a with a writer or a painter or a filmmaker or an architect than i would with a musician like most of the time I don't know why I just like, I just feel like, um, more I can be, I just feel more inspired by speaking with other creatives. Why do you think it might be? I know you said you don't know why, but why do you think that might be? Cause if you're like, if, if you're from different mediums, then I guess like the, the point that you can connect on in the middle would probably be something would probably be something more abstract i'm not really interested in talking with producers about what door they use and what plugins they like and i don't find that inspiring but like talking with a writer about you know about their process or talking with a filmmaker about like the last thing they worked on and how they developed that idea i just find that more inspiring because it's abstract well, the way that I would, it's not abstract to them, but the way that I would frame it uh, as relevant to what I do is abstract. You know, and I you, just find that hard. You know what's great about the way you, as you were talking about that, your face literally changed as you were describing a potential conversation with a producer and then talking to a writer or a painter. Like your, your smile became very visible. And it became very real. And I could imagine that in real life that you would genuinely enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do like enjoy people a lot. Like, and, and it's the same with like, um, you know, with, it is the same with collaborating with an artist. Like I like, I like getting to know an artist. I like getting to know someone, especially a creative person and, um, and asking them about their process. Like it just fascinates me. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask you, cause what I like about you is you have answers and then you're self-critical and you're like, that answer sucked. So, <laughs> and I always find that so funny cause it's like this like thing, it's true and it is who I am, but also I'm not, I'm not loving that that's who I am. So that answer about what inspires you and you say life and you're like, Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. That's my answer. It's so funny to me, but it, because it also is just true. It helps you make your music and your art and you love that. So it's weird and funny and interesting that the inspiration behind the art that you actually create, you're like, I don't like it. Even though the, the art that you create, you like. Yeah. Yeah, I, there's like, there's a lot there for me to unpack. I feel like if you spoke with my therapist, like they'd probably say something similar to what you just said. Um, and I, I'm like very surprised that like, I, I am that like, um, I, I am like, I no, I'm not surprised. Like I, I'm aware that I, I'm extremely open. I'm a terrible liar and I'm very, um, uh, like it's all there on the table, which I guess is like part of the trust thing, I guess, like, you know, if an artist comes here, like if I'm working with someone, like there's no bullshit. Like, you know, I'm pretty transparent. 
Why would that be a bad thing? That you're honest and that you're open. Um, I guess I'd say on the whole, um, I like people that are real and like on the whole, I'd say it's not a bad thing. I'd say it's a good thing, but I think like, um, you know, sometimes you need to be tactful, maybe strategic, you know, um, and like, this doesn't lend itself that great to that all the time. Yeah. But it's more fun. Yeah, like, it's more real. Yeah. I mean, this is significantly more fun than if you put on a lie and a different show. Yeah. And like like it just yeah. wouldn't work. Like, but but I think that translates to your life in the end. And that translates to your art. And I feel and I have spoken to people who I feel like they're trying to be something that they genuinely are not. And I can sometimes hear it in certain songs that they put out. Like, oh, this is you trying to be someone. This is you wanting to be not who you are, but something else. You're like reaching for a version of yourself that isn't really there. And maybe it will be there in the future, but that's not you at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Especially like in like in like rap music, like where 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 authenticity is is kind of like one of the most important uh, aspects of someone's music. And you you can you can feel it sometimes with you know, so yeah I I I've I felt similarly at times with some artists um, when yeah yeah it really it really comes across, and sometimes it's are like unspeakable, it's too abstract to explain why but you just see something or listen to something it just doesn't feel um, authentic. Yeah, isn't that strange that you can talk to someone and can feel authentic, but you listen to the art and you're like, or you view the art or you read the art and you're like, the energy is off. Like the yeah. energy doesn't match well. Like it's it may sound good, but for whatever reason, the energy just, yeah, it just doesn't feel right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot uh, like that is unspeakable when it comes to, talking about you know the virtues or or, or down down for all um flaws of um someone's music you know like you can analyze it to shit but also there is like some part of like taking in someone's music that is just instinctive you know but i guess at the same time you've also got social media plays a part as well in this authenticity uh in like you know today's culture around music you know, and sometimes, you know, that's a thing that some artists, you know, have to uh, have to tackle. And uh, sometimes you can sense it when it doesn't feel authentic. I wonder what would happen if all artists just were like, nah, fuck this. When I'm not doing it. And like every artist was like communally like, you know what? This yeah. social media game is ruining the energy that I have to be able to make yeah. the art like i just want to make art and perform and i wonder yeah. what would happen if everyone was like no nah. yeah i'm just not posting on tiktok every day i'm not posting yeah. on instagram every day i'm not taking videos yeah. of myself doing inane minute boring tasks for the sake of showing my fans that it's kind yeah. of pleasant outside yeah yeah i mean that would be amazing it would be like a a, a global um, union, music, like music, music union, to implement something like that. I mean, could you imagine like Isaac Hayes or Bob Dylan on 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 social media on TikTok? I mean, it's just crazy. Like the, um, I mean, some people really really find their pocket, you know, and like really really, really figure out how to express themselves in a way that doesn't compromise, um, and they find that like that zone and and execute it great and you know and they don't compromise but a lot a lot really struggle and um and there's so much pressure there you know so um and, and yeah and it's sometimes you know you can really feel it where it feels really contrived yeah why isn't there an artist union i mean they have a writers guild in there la are. i mean there's a musicians union in london in in the uh, in the uk um, and I'm sure there's, I'm sure there are different unions and, but 
the way the, the industry works, like it's so much more like Wild West. It's so it's so cowboy. The whole the whole thing, like you have like different people in the industry will 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 tell people like, oh, this is the industry standard. This is the way of doing things. And there's not a lot of um, transparency. There's not a lot of communication. There's a lot of like hidden. Um, Well, um, sorry, I don't want to articulate this. It's like a lot of, um, there's a lot, there's a lot of aspects to the industry, which are like kind of kept quiet, kept, kept somewhat secret. And, uh, and I feel like a lot of people take advantage of, of those things. Um, and sometimes, you know, if you, if you don't have as an artist, uh, or a producer or whatever, like if you don't have someone backing your corner people will take advantage because they know they can. Um, plus like, you know, money is so scarce and everyone's just trying to survive, trying to make it work. Um, yeah, it's kind of a crazy industry. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, the way I describe my experience of understanding the industry is like, you're all in a house and I just get to look through the window for a small yeah. period of time when I talk to you all. So I get to yeah. look through and, and, and peer through and I notice something and be like, oh, what's that in there? But it definitely is mysterious. That's, that's definitely something about the music industry is you don't really know what goes on behind closed doors. Like you don't, like we hear things about labels, but you like vaguely hear things about labels. I don't actually fully comprehend what working under a label is like. I don't really comprehend what the contracts are like, like all those things with regards to agreements and working with people, those are all things that I'm like, very much is still in the ether somewhere that you have to be deep into to get a full understanding of. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of artists that are in the industry that, you know, still have such different, um, such different perspectives and different, um, by situations that they've had to go through than others. Like, you know, you know, like people, people really do like have different journeys. Like it's crazy the extent to which, you know, someone like, you know, succeeds like, you know, on day one and, and, and like they sign to a major label or someone like is in it for 10 years and does this and that. And, and, um, people's experiences are so different. And then of course, like the humans that we are, like everyone's comparing themselves to everyone else and, you know, um, but I think it's just important to remember that like the industry isn't music. Music is music. Like what, what we do in the studio, like what we create when people perform, like this is, this is what we do. All the other stuff is just, um, noise. And, um, and it's important to, um, to keep your um what are they horse expression like your blinkers like when horses have like whatever on the side so they can just look ahead and stay focused i don't know the terminology but but i think that that's like really important to like stay um focused on on on, on what you're doing and your creations and the industry is like yeah it's 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 not perfect and there's so many issues but um but whatever it doesn't matter like fuck it like the most important thing is what you're creating and it's good it's gonna work out fuck it fuck it fuck it that's 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 it just it's it's fine it's gonna be it's all gonna be, work out yeah do you think that people not keeping their the like deer in the headlights focus makes them jaded like they start looking at everybody else they're almost not running their own race yeah, I've seen some really shitty examples of that happening to to artists where where they become obsessive about their aesthetic or you know how how they come across and it's like you're not a you're not a model like you're not a an influencer like you you're trying trying to do music and and um, yeah it's it's sad like it's you know and some people just like cruising. On, you know, and they just connect with the tools that we have to promote our music. And some some people just like find it really hard, and they're just like swimming upstream. And and I always say to everyone, like, you focus on the music, 
just focus on the music just make make amazing amazing music and um yeah that is that is what this is it's the music industry it's, yeah. it's, it is it is it is music at the end of the day and like sounds really basic but like a lot of artists do like shift their focus to a lot of like arbitrary things in my opinion and um it's important to just keep like stay focused on what's important what do you think is the most arbitrary that you've seen or what do you think is a common thing that people focus shift their focus to potentially mistakenly i mean the most arbitrary thing like i've seen is like press shots i know an artist i knew an artist that was like really obsessed about their their photographs and like how and how they came across in the, the side of it and it was just like just really really lost sight of but i think that was that specific obsession was part of a, like a greater issue with them i guess right now it's kind of like tiktok i guess is like this obsession with like you doing tiktok and and, and going viral um but I, I wouldn't describe that as arbitrary, like, you know, cause for some, you know, it, you know, it's really launched their career and, um, or some, like I said before, managed to do it in a way that doesn't compromise, there isn't a compromise for them artistically. So it's not arbitrary in their case, but if someone doesn't know like what their, what their, um, what their, what their thing is going to be, then, um, then it can be arbitrary to put all your focus into something which you you know it's better to just not do it in my opinion and and just just observe it until you you, you figure out you know how you can do it in a way that, that works for you yeah i think it just takes your energy like it just zaps your creative juices your creative energy like you just end up focusing on something that isn't your art and then you become obsessed with the thing that is just a vehicle for your art. Yeah. 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 It's so true. Yeah. I mean, they, they keep talking about, I keep hearing that they, they're trying to ban TikTok in the U S. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to happen. I saw something in the news, like it's like a Biden said, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's going to happen. And that's just politics. That's nothing to do with children's mental health or anything, uh, anything ethical. It's, it's, it's just, uh, you know, probably the same reason it wasn't Facebook banned in China for like forever. Like it wasn't allowed there. There's no Google in China. Really no Google as well. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Crazy. Freedom of information is not really a thing in a lot of the world. No. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned earlier that you have been going through grief. I wanted to ask you about that, if that's okay, over the past yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I'm happy to talk about it. What, why um, yeah why why the grief over the past 12 months or the past year uh, my mom died oh i'm um, sorry yeah, thank you just um just over a year ago yeah which was like um you know obviously earth shattering i was very close to her um um but um yeah i was just so grateful to have music to turn to i mean at the beginning it was just like this catharsis just like it was a month of, of grieving and like doing the whole thing with my family. And, and then when I started making music, it was just like, wow, you know, like, wow, I have this thing that I can, that I can use right now. It's just, um, just such gratitude. And I still have it. Um, and obviously just like losing your mom, just re re shifts your, um, your whole perspective losing, I mean, losing anyone important to you has been shift your perspective but in terms of me and my future and my approach a lot has changed for me creatively since she died and um um yeah i guess one side of it is just like let's go you know life is short i'm doing this like i'm i'm i am gonna make this happen and like a level of determination that i never had before um and then i guess uh, the whole other side of it is the, is the human side of it you know i'm just I just have more empathy like than I used to have. And, and, uh, it's just changed the way that I see people, the way I see myself. How do you look at your music as a result of that? Like you said that you really tapped into your artistry, your creativity, your music, when you mm. look at it and, and what's been created since that moment, how do you view 
for an artist to new music? Well, one, one, one kind of, uh, shift that happened for me was, um, I think like in the past I had been a lot, this isn't necessarily to do with grief, maybe more just as a reminder of, um, my mortality it was just like, uh, in the past I'd been very focused on, like, I need to work with high profile artists. I need to work with these people. I've been doing this for so long. Like, why isn't this happening? Why isn't that? And my focus really shift to just like get better. Like music is music is like such a gift and I love doing what I do. It just stop. It just, you know, I, I invested in my studio. I made my studio better. I focused on myself technically as a producer, focused more on myself, uh, like theoretically as a musician, um, and just like focused on getting better, uh, which definitely came about through that. And, um, I don't know, you know, and then the other side, I guess there is this dichotomy. There's like work and focus. And then the other side is just being a, just being a human, you know, and just like connecting with films I watch and books I read and people I talk to or, or artists that come in, like, you know, I'm working with someone in particular who like, I probably won't mention like their name, but they're going through something like pretty big right now. And, um, and I feel like my grief has helped me, has helped inform my sense of empathy towards them and has just helped me be more present for them, which I think has like just meant that the art we're making is just amazing. Um, I don't, I don't know if, if this project would be going the way that it is if, if I hadn't gone through my grief. It's interesting. You're, you're, you seem extremely self-aware, like you seem extremely tuned into how you feel what you create and then like the resulting things that happen in your life and you seem to be able to draw like parallels and strings from like your life into what's created momentum and i find that fascinating i don't think that's something that people do a lot is being able to see how events really shape them yeah yeah no it is like completely connected um and um yeah it's 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 yeah i'm 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 very aware of that and like i i know that um you know this is like the state of mind that i'm in is directly informing the music i make so if i feel like healthy and fit and at peace and happy and fulfilled my art is just going to be better. Uh, so like a lot of my life, uh, a lot of the decisions I've made in my life, uh, you know, to do with things that keep my anxiety down and keep me feeling at peace, um, keep me happy. And, um, and also cause I make so much music and I don't do a lot else. <laughs> um, I, um, you know, if someone's like, how are you? <laughs> or how have you been? Immediately, I think, what was the last song that I made? You know, if, and if I'm like, if I'm, if I, you know, I don't know, if, if I were going through a writer's block on through a period of, you know, I, you know, I, the last three songs I made weren't good. Let's say that, like, I, um, I, it makes me feel shit about myself generally. <laughs> like, it's, it's so connected what I make and, 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 and how I see myself. And, and, um, I think a lot of artists probably share that, that feeling. Yeah, I think so. Which is kind of, which is kind of a head fart. Cause that makes me think like people like, I don't know, uh, like D'Angelo or, um, or, uh, Frank Ocean, like who, who take a long period of time between music. Like I know that if I was in their shoes, there would definitely be periods of time where I would feel like useless and worthless. Um, like I have it now, like, and I never think, oh, but I made that song three years ago and it's so good and people really love it and they respect it. Um, it's like, it doesn't matter. It might as well have been made by someone else. Well, it is made by somebody else because you're no longer that person. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, like you're yeah. only this person in this moment of time. And once an art, once a piece of art has been created, 
you're now that person who's created that art. Like you're before you, it wasn't created. So you had to go through the journey, but once it's complete, you're different to the person who had to start it. Like you had to grow and learn on that journey. So I definitely get that because then the praise that you get is not you anymore. It's like, this older version of you, it's like the past you who made it. They're the ones who get the praise. And now you're in this new place of like, is that the best that I will ever be able to do? Like, like I've reached the stratosphere of like, even if you don't get the credit, you may be like, that was amazing. And I love that song, but is that the best I'm capable of? And then you create things you don't like and you start to get annoyed at yourself and you start looking at yourself in the mirror and you get like, Oh, I, I think it is a rabbit hole. It's like the mind fuck of being creative of wanting to do your best at the same time. It's like really pushing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think having this mentality, like, cause if it were in reverse, if, if, if you, um, if you just fed also sort of the confidence that just built like a mountain of, all of the accomplishments you, you've done and all the great music you've made in your life, you're, you, I don't know like if your ego would allow you to like keep pushing, you know, keep trying to keep trying to make something better every time. I feel like the true innovators probably share that same quality. Well, the irony is why would you if you're getting credit for that very thing? Why, why, would, why you... would you grow? Like, why would you change? Why would you push yourself if you've already been told you're amazing and that that is amazing and you just, like, the temptation is to just keep doing that because yeah. you don't get more awards unless you keep pushing. That's the, that's the weird thing is, like, you have to test yourself. You have to keep trying. Like, otherwise, you don't become one of those artists. You don't become one of those people if you stop at any point to be like, nope, I'm done growing. That's enough. I've grown enough. I'm 28. I've grown enough. That's fine. Or I'm 45. That's enough. No more growing. I'm just, it is what it is. I feel like that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. And uh, I see, I see with some, like, you know, what you, what you live for creatively, like it varies from artist to artist and some just don't live to innovate like that. So it's, it's a different journey. Well, I think you don't have that problem, my friend. I think that's obvious in your music. And I think the the benefit of listening to your music is literally that. And I think I said at the very beginning, but it comes from such a genuine place. It feels very real. Like it doesn't feel like there's any airs put on. It doesn't feel like you're trying to do something that doesn't adhere to who you are as a person. And I think that's why a lot of artists want to work with you. I think that's why the fans enjoy your music and enjoy your production. So my hope is that it only continues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 I think that it'll be okay. Uh, <laughs> I feel, I feel, I, I, I do feel confident. Um, but it's, but yeah, I, but, um, but I feel confident right now because I'm making great shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I've been on a roll. Like I feel like creatively, like since um, you know, it was like eight months, uh, not eight, seven months after my mom died, and and something shifted like in my grief, and just like it's just been like, all right, let's go, let's go, let's go, and 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 like is it feels great. You're in all in mode. Like, all in mode. Yeah. 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 I. It doesn't always feel that way. It doesn't always feel great. So like when it feels great, hundred yeah. percent, you just throw all your chips in the middle and go all in and you just double down on it all. Cause like it, it, it's only a moment in time where it feels great for a, like, and you just enjoy it for as long as it lasts and then it becomes a grind again. And then there will be another moment where it feels amazing again. It's all relative. It's the roller coaster of it all. It's like this balance. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite aware of it. Like, like I have this like routine which like um really helps me my routine really helps me um helps with my productivity and my creativity but then at the same time like routine also can just be the enemy 
creatively. So it's just like this constant balancing act. Oh, if I feel like my energy is just uninspired, slightly stagnant, it's been like session after session and just too much routine. Like I'll take some mushrooms maybe in a session and it just like shifts my perspective a bit and just makes me approach things slightly different or smoke a little weed or just try and like approach, just try and like shift my mindset a little bit. And um, I'm always like quite aware of, um, of, um, of, 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 of this whole thing and always trying to like, it's like a balancing act, you know? Yeah. I think you're doing pretty well. Like it feels like, it feels like you're, you're doing pretty well at the moment with the balancing act. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, man, I only have one more question for you. And based on what you've said already, it's probably the hardest question I'm going to ask you. Uh, purely because of the amount of music that you seem to have a passion for and that you like. But if you had to recommend one album, can be any genre of music, cannot be your own music, to recommend that everybody should listen to at least once to get an appreciation of, what would it be? I know, like, the first thing that came to my mind um i'm gonna regret saying it um <laughs> but it really is like my but it's like you know oh, it's like it's like my special place um i'm just like is that the one that i want to go with yeah it might be fuck it uh van morrison astral weeks <laughs> it's just like a beautiful album and but like i i i think that uh because I, I had this like tradition well, I used to have, I used to do it a lot and then I kind of stopped doing it. But with an artist, when we start a session, we'll pick a record. I pick like three records from my, from my collection and they let them pick one of the three. And then we sit in, in silence and listen to the record from start to finish before we start making anything. And um, I don't know, I am, an, I am like an album guy. I collected albums since I was a kid. So some albums are just like, you know, uh, you know, genius, right? It, and and anyone would appreciate it. Blah blah blah. And then some albums just really are your are your thing. They like move you, and you can listen to them on loop. And Astral Weeks is 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 one of those albums. Um, so it's kind of a bit of a shit one because like maybe some people will listen <laughs> and think, oh, maybe it would encapsulate like what he does um, creatively, and it, and it doesn't at all. It's just it's just a, a beautiful moment. That's better. It's yeah. better that it doesn't encapsulate. You know, it's just an album that you love. Like yeah. that that is that is a significantly better answer than an album that you also love but tries to encapsulate you. Like there's no Yeah. 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 That's that's why I like about talking to you is the the constant commentary around how good or bad your answers are is so funny to be a part of <laughs> watching me sweat well it's just like you're the one who's deciding whether it's good or bad answer um you're like nope that was i didn't answer your question wait no nope, that's a bad answer no yeah that yeah so it's so it's amusing it is like partly me and it is also partly like english because I've watched like, you know, I've seen like a few other episodes of, of your podcast, you know, and I, I know you speak with obviously a lot of Americans, obviously it's a hip hop um, podcast, you speak with a lot of Americans and the American energy is just so different. So with, different. Uh, English, English people are just so much more like apologetic about, you know, being good or like being anything, which is like, you know, and um, it's really self-deprecating. Yeah. It's so yeah. yeah. Bit of English, a bit of Jew like makes for the like ultimate <laughs> self deprecation <laughs> well i think it's like because i think aussies are self-deprecating as well i think the english and aussies have like similar humor and i think what americans often struggle to handle is how there's a lack of sincerity like they're so sincere in their self-belief like it's so strong and then aussies and english people seem to be more like yeah, I believe in myself, but I'm also an idiot. So like, don't really believe what you see. So there's like that part of it that I feel like there's the disconnect sometimes. Explain that about Australians, that they believe in themselves, but also... there, are, Yeah, so there's like part of it, like where there's like 
I'm, um, I can be amazing and I have this talent, but then also I'm kind of insane. So I don't really know if it's true or not. So it's like this, this ability to be like, Hey, I think I'm on the right path, but then again, I'm a mess of a human and I look at my life and it's a bit of a shit show. So I don't, is that really representative of the truth? I don't know, maybe a little bit. So, but I think, I don't know. I think it keeps you grounded and humble when you're able to like dissect yourself that way that you're like, I think I'm doing the right things, but I'm not the ultimate judge of that. I can only assess it to a certain point and then I guess the fans and the people will decide. Yeah. 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 And and thus the uh balancing act continues. Yeah. <laughs> God, I don't think I could end the show better. Thus the balancing act continues. Um yeah. I think I think you're I think you should do interviews more often, my friend. You're you're doing a, a, a great job. But as I said at the beginning of the show, please make sure you check out Subculture. He's doing amazing work. He just released a single, as I said, Dopamine that came out. Um, he had an EP that dropped 2023, more of rain most recently as well. But man, is there anything you wanted to shout out, plug? I know you're working a lot. So what have the people got to look forward to? Um, it's a lot of great music. There's a lot of artists that I would love to shout out, but um, I'm not going to do it because I'm going to end up missing some people out. But um <laughs> But ciao, Bina, actually, just because, um, um, yeah, you mentioned dopamine and, and, and I'm working a lot with her and there's a lot more music with her coming. Um, and then there's a new subculture sage project coming and, and then there's a lot of other things I'm working on that are like very dear to my heart and it's all, it's going to be a, it's going to be a busy year for these for sure. Well, man, I'm excited. The fans are excited and, uh, hopefully we'll get to do this at some point not on a camera and in person either i'll have to come to london or vice versa but man it's been an absolute pleasure i've been looking forward to this so for anyone who doesn't know i actually messaged uh subculture last week and said i'm looking forward to our interview only for you to be like that's next week so that was how much i was looking forward to this i got my weeks confused so um i'm genuinely thrilled with how this worked out and i appreciate your time Bestie, man. Now, lovely to meet you. Thanks for, thanks for um, you know, allowing me to be a part of your great show. Appreciate it.